One man. One man stood against 600 Philistines. One man was armed with nothing but a mere cattle prod. But God was with that one man, and he had victory. Judges chapter 3, verse 31 says, After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. We know he was a judge because it says after him. That's referring to Ehud. In chapter 3, we read about what Ehud did. But Shamgar, there's really not a lot said about him. There's one verse here devoted to what he did. But we know that he had victory over a great multitude. He was one man all by himself, but he did great things because God was on his side. Now let me give you another example. Paul. Over half of the book of Acts is written about Paul. We know a lot about him. He wrote, I believe, 14 separate letters in the New Testament. So we know a lot about him, but he's, that doesn't necessarily make him more important than Paul. There's a lot of time differences there. There's a lot of difference between them. But they both did something great because God was on their side. They were one man, but they accomplished great things. Now, Shamgar killed 600 Philistines by himself, and he had just a common weapon. It wasn't really even considered a weapon. It was just a cattle prod. I've been over to Mr. Mike's before. I've seen a cattle prod. There's, it's very hard to do much with a cattle prod besides prod cattle, pretty much. So it was just a common tool. He was obviously worked with livestock a lot because that's what he used. But it was just a common tool. It wasn't anything great. It was about eight feet long. It had a point on one end, and it had a flat part on the other end. So it was just something very simple. But it didn't matter what kind of man it was. It didn't matter what kind of tool it was. He was just a common man with a common tool. But since God was on his side, he accomplished something extraordinary. He judged Israel, and he gave salvation to them. Now, just because he has a short verse doesn't mean he was insignificant. We read throughout the New Testament, there are passages, there are chapters, there are even books devoted to some characters, so we know a lot more about them. But just because he was a single man with a single verse devoted to him, he still accomplished something great. Just because it was a short verse, that doesn't make him insignificant. God, if God's on our side, we will always win, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're experiencing. If we have faith in God, then we can get through anything. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, Philippians 4, verse 13. This is just one of the many good examples of one man doing great things. Like I said, Paul. Peter went out and preached. He had faith in Jesus. He went out and preached. And there are so many more examples throughout both the Old and the New Testament. Moses led all of Israel because he had faith in God. He was able to do that. Now, I know that victory, one man standing against 600, that's not something that we can do today. We know that if we face 600 people against us, then there's really no way we can win. But if we have faith in God, then we'll still be able to overcome. Now, I like to I've been taking, Thomas and I have taken karate for about six years now. We use a lot of weapons, but there's no physical way that we by ourselves could overcome 600 men. That's just something impossible. Now, Paul overcame not just physical opponents, but spiritual opponents. He went through shipwrecks. He was bitten by serpents. He was cast into prison. He experienced all these physical but also spiritual torments. He was tempted, but he still retained his faith in God. He had that faith in God. He knew that God would deliver him through anything. Now, like I said, if we have God on our side, we're always going to win. If we're over here picking teams for any kind of sport and we have God on our side, there is no one that can stand against us. Romans 8, verse 3, If God is with me, then who can stand against me? We know that Satan won't be able to stand against us. He fears God. He is subject to the whims of God. He obeys God. We read in Job where Satan is only able to tempt Job after God gives him the permission to do that. So Satan can't overcome God. There is nothing that we can think of that can overcome God. God is the most powerful, the most great, most awe-inspiring thing that we can think of. And we know that he can accomplish great things through little people, through small people, through common people armed with common things. So it's not the man that does it. It's not the tool that does it. It's the God that's behind them that does it. Now, we may have a hard time doing certain things. We may, not be able, we, not may, we may not be able to teach that well or preach that well or lead singing that well or anything like that. But if God is with us, then we can't overcome those, uh, those things that stand between us. It may take great courage to stand up and preach a sermon or to lead singing. But if we to pray to God for that courage, then what can stop us? We, it's not going to be perfect. 
we're all going to mess up. We make mistakes. We're human. But if we have our faith in God, then that's what's important. If we, put the, if we have the right heart behind it, if we put effort into it, and above all, we're trying to bring glory to God, that's what's important. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of person you are. You may do anything. You may, it doesn't matter what kind of job you have. It doesn't matter what kind of income you have, what kind of family you have. God can take any type of person and make something great out of him. Peter was a fisherman. Most of the apostles were fishermen. There was a tax collector, a doctor. He took men from all different walks of life, but he brought them together and accomplished great things with them. We read throughout the New Testament, especially Acts, of sermons that the apostles preached. They had that faith in God, and they stood up, and they did great things, and they brought others to that same faith in God. When Philip preached to the eunuch in Acts chapter 8, he was just one man. We don't know a lot about him. He was one of the men elected there to tend to the Grecian widows in Acts chapter 7. So we don't read a lot about him, but he went to and preached to that man of a high rank that had a lot of authority, who was over the queen's treasury. So that was just one man, a common man, went and spoke up to someone with a lot of rank, with a lot of power, with a lot of prestige, and he brought that man to Christ as well. So it doesn't matter what kind of person we are. Again, God can do anything with any of us. You don't have to be some special person. You don't have to have some sort of gift to get up and lead singing or to lead a prayer to read scripture, to preach, anything like that. God can take any of us and he can do great things. But only if he is on our side. We have to have that faith that God can carry us through these things. Now if you're here tonight and maybe you don't have that faith in God, if you, don't, if you haven't been putting God first in your lives, if you haven't always been on God's side and you need him back on your side, then please make that known. If you need to be baptized, if you want to be on that side with God, if you want God to be able to do great things with you, then come forward and be baptized. Or if you already have been baptized and you've left God's team, if you will, if you've left God and you need to come back to Him because you know that He can accomplish great things, we're happy to help you in any way that we can. If you'll make that known, together we stand and sing.